So this is Across the Bug River by VUCA Simulations. This is a new game, um, but one using a system with some pedigree. So um, it's a operational World War II, it's a one mapper. That immediately makes me happy. I think there should be more one map operational World War II games. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm just in the process of setting up. I've got the um, Russians on the map here. As I zoom in you'll see the, the Russians over here and behind the Bug River which is the major river down here. I've got these big stacks of Germans that I've not set up yet. So this is from VUCA Simulations previously called um, Furor Teutonicus Games who a couple of years ago um, released the extremely well received um, what's it called? Crossing the Line, Arc 1944. Beautiful production values and uh, a fabulous game by, for, uh, by the people that bought it and played it said it seemed to say it was fabulous from what I can see on Board Game Geek. That wasn't a huge number of people and that is in keeping with the system in general which was first launched in the mid 90s by um, Moments in History which released a game called Triumphant Fox um, by Dirk Blenerman, who's credited in this rule book as the as the system guy. He released Triumphant Fox Moments in History, very well received, not huge sales, but the people that played it loved it. There was a follow-up called Piercing the Reich, which was the Battle of Arken in 1944, which then uh, Furor Teutonicus re-implemented a couple of years back. Um, and then they renamed themselves VUCA Simulations, and here we are. Um, VUCA are also re-releasing or reprinting Crossing the Line. That's a, there's a second edition of that available for pre-order, and also re-implementing um, Triumphant Fox, which is now called Operation Theseus Gazala 42, also available on pre-order. But this across the Berg River, Volodymyr Volinsky 1941, is an entirely new situation in the system. Um, and it's part of Operation Barbarossa. We're, army, we're in Army Group South Territory, Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of Russia, 1941. And yeah, like I say, I'm in the process of setting up. Uh, so just on the components, absolutely brilliant components, four counter sheets of pre-cut, um, ready to punch counters, no clipping required. A um, really lovely graphic design, for example, you can see the dark grey of these two pontoon bridges and they correspond to the dark grey shading on this um, German division, which I think is part of 29th Army Corps, along with that one, and that could be differentiated from 3rd Motorised Corps, because that's got a light grey strip along the bottom which corresponds with that light grey for that pontoon bridge and they've just used lovely colours, recognisable but kind of muted, you know you've got this purple and grey here, this kind of sea green and grey there, another sort of green and grey there, blue and grey, black and grey, the Russians are also equally well differentiated with the coloured stripes and so on. It's all very nicely done. The map is beautiful. Again, muted colours, but very easy to find your way around. The roads and railroad networks are very clear. The rivers and streams are very clear. The forests and swamps and so on are very clear. The only thing that isn't particularly clear are perhaps the hexides, the very faint hexides with this sort of black line, slight white um, edge to it and the hex numbers, but they're good enough um, that you can get in and see them and then as you pan out they kind of fade out and disappear, which was clearly the intention and they've done it very well, but it did make setup a little bit more challenging, um, but at the expense of perhaps a far more beautiful effect on the map. The um, the actual uh, player aids are on a, an incredibly thick cardstock, you know, there's no flex to it at all. It's it's like a placemat or something. It's like 350 or 400 grams per square meter kind of stock. Um, really heavy, thick, lovely. No need for plexi with this because it's got a mounted map as well, which the Arken, um, the Crossing the Line Arken 44 is going to come with as well. Yeah, really enjoying it. Um, 
So uh, on, I'm not going to discuss the system now. I'm going to set the Germans up um, and sort of get playing and then get into it as we play. A nice innovation was that the, the map has tracks all over it for um, activation points for the, for the forces and a game turn track and an initiative modifier track and a, another track over there for Soviet action points. Uh, but they've also provided this handy sheet here where you can track it all. It's a track sheet for solitaire play, but I'd use this even if we were playing, uh, even if I was playing a post, because it's just, it's e easier to put the um, German formation point markers um, down on individual tracks than to stack them all up and down on here. So, and it's got an action point track and a turn track and an initiative track. Beautiful, again, on that super thick cardstock. So I'm just setting the Germans up. Um, it's a, a sort of impulse game where you um, you roll for initiative um, and then the side that wins the initiative gets to activate a formation, which might be, you know, like a infantry division like this or whatever, a colour-coded formation. And then once they've um, activated, you... Um, roll for initiative again and as the one side wins the initiative the other side gets a, a, a marker moved up on this track to give them a bonus to their roll and so eventually if they keep losing the initiative eventually they've got a, such a huge bonus that they win the initiative and then it goes back to, to the other side and so on and you alternate backwards and forwards taking activations until you don't want to act anymore and pass or run out of points or things to do or activation points to use and then you um, do the sort of uh, bookkeeping and record keeping and go into a, 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 a new turn. Um, this is a seven turn game and the German objectives are to get into sort of victory point locations right over here. They're marked with these little, um, these little metal symbols with the star being one victory point and two stars being two victory points and there's six of them over here I think one there one there one up here one here maybe a couple there's one down there and one down there there's a few up in the north um, of the map here there up over here and here and then there's some conditional ones in red where they have to take them by a certain turn so there's a couple in there now there's more red ones further forward I think there's one here one down in this city here and so on but you can see that the uh, the German objective is to pretty much take the entire map and actually they can get bonus um, victory points from exiting troops from the east map edge. So, uh, um, yeah, the, the as you would expect with a Barbarossa game, it's the, uh, the Germans are, it's a full attack defence. The Germans are fully expected to sweep the board here and um, it's how effectively they managed to do that that... Um, that uh, determines who wins the game. So a pretty defensive game expected for the for the Russians. They are asked to make certain counterattacks, but um, they probably won't be doing that. Um, and we'll get into that mechanic um, later. But you know, this reinforcements chart shows a shows a Panzer um, uh, Division Thirteenth Panzer Division coming on for the Germans in turn three. But then from turn three onwards, we just get Russian reinforcements. And so you might expect some counterattacking later in the game through as, as turns three, four and five kick in. And, and you know, the, the Russians get some artillery, a rifle division, a uh, mechanised division, and then a tank division turn up from between turns three and six. So there it is. Um, really looking forward to this um it is a, a beautiful looking system quite complex and i'm i'll be honest it's a bit like it, it's no less complex than ocs um and a, a completely new system for me and i'm actually looking at this right now uh, a bit nonplussed um, and quite intimidated by the prospect of setting the germans up because i think um it will be quite difficult to get things right on the first play um and and, and um yeah i always find that <clears throat> grokking the entire system and understanding um how movement and supply and um and the just the combat tables and the attacking and defense 
um, is going to work uh, very very difficult for a new system and so if you for example if we look just at this you know this Russian infantry sort of guard unit um, just stationed behind the river here we know it's a terrible unit it's got a, a sort of quality of two which on a scale of two to seven is the worst possible it's got one combat strength no anti-tank points and a movement of three it's absolutely diabolical as bad as units get However, that doesn't tell us how much force is the Germans we're going to need to put into it to knock it out. So it's all a bit of an unknown. And then we've got, just back from there, we've got some machine gun infantry with a much higher quality, or I think, I, I don't know whether that's effectiveness rating. I think it's called effectiveness in this game. But anyway, a four isn't bad. Four combat strength, one anti-tank point, two move in pillboxes. How difficult is that going to be to take? Don't know. And so on. So, you know, I think as the attacker in a new system, very easy to either not put enough force into some of these things and suddenly find you're stalled, or to spend too much resource trying to knock things like that out and find that you haven't got as far as you should have done because you've, you know, you've piled up on things that were... A, Doddle to knock out. Anyway, let's think about this. The uh, the German here. We've got the we've got twenty ninth Army Corps here, um, and these are the one hundred eleventh and two hundred ninety ninth, hundred eleventh and two hundred ninety ninth um, infantry divisions, and they're aiming uh, to go that way, uh, sort of a, this sort of diagonal. I think up here, aiming for maybe this forest turning up like that so they want to push through here and into all this open space up here and obviously uh, I've got to have a plan for these but the um, uh, these guys look like they'll be pushing straight east and between these two they've got to figure out which one's going to look loop up through all that marsh and non stuff up there which doesn't look very appealing and which is going to just follow the rail line down here yeah planning um so anyway let me set the germans up and see how we get on so set up here in across the bug river was surprisingly easy for the germans and that's because largely because stacking means you're only allowed one infantry type unit per hex and We've got an infantry division here with nothing but infantry type units, so we don't have to worry about how we're going to sort of stack them all cleverly to accomplish our goals, because they can only go one per hex anyway. And same here, we've got this um, 299th infantry division along the river here, ready to go. And then we've got the 44th infantry here, and up there we've got the 298th Infantry, these blue round here. And then we've got a Panzer um, Division up there. The game starts with um, a surprise attack by the Germans, not surprisingly. <laughs> and um, what that means in this game is they get three consecutive activations before we go into the standard initiative rules. And the standard initiative rules are that you dice off for initiative... And then whoever wins, uh, let's say the Germans won the, that dice off, then you would take the marker, flip it to the Soviet side and put it on the plus two. And the next time there's a dice off, they'd get plus four. If they lost the next initiative, they'd go up. But, but And then if they won that one with their plus four, it would go on to a plus two German and so on. And, and so it never goes back to zero. Once it's come off zero, it stays up in this region. Um, so normally there's this ebb and flow of, of initiatives, but at the start of the game, um, essentially the, the German side gets to activate three infantry divisions, one after the other, and, and can only do one activation with each. Um, and, well, yeah. So I think we're probably going to start off um, down here and activate this... Um, 111th infantry then I reckon we're going to activate this um, 299th infantry and then I reckon we're going to come up here and do something with this lot and then we'll go into our and we'll worry about up here 
later or maybe I'll activate these blue guys but they're a bit bottled in um, so yeah we've got to try and work out how combat works so we'll come back and do a combat and these should be fairly easy because as or, or at least they should be a good opportunity to run through a combat um, so the Germans want to take some bridges so that they can get supply to the other side of the Bug River, which otherwise crosses supply. But they can also build pontoon bridges, um, so they're thinking about where to do that. There's a bridge here, a railway bridge, but a bridge nonetheless, that they'd like to capture, and that would then get them supply from down here into this area. So I think they'd probably like to build a pontoon bridge in this area then there's a bridge up here which they'd like to capture and another bridge here which they'd like to capture and I reckon I might build a 14th Panzer bridge a pontoon bridge somewhere up over here so that they can get up into that area that's my thinking um, yeah so let's get going then I'm going to um, activate these purples to begin with and um, yeah let's run through this track then we do initiative so formation activation I wonder if there's a chart that tells me what I do on formation activation I think what I do is I roll on this current formation activation level chart for the number of action points we're going to get so every formation has a track of its um, current activation points and that's how many times it can be activated but it's also how many action points it's likely to get to spend when it's activated so you can see that if you've got a current activation level of one so you've done loads of stuff you're likely to get one or two action points and you've got to really roll really well to get your full seven Whereas if you've got an activation level of five or six, you're you're much more likely to get good numbers of activation points. So this formation currently has an activation level at maximum of six. So let's grab the German die. Let's grab the black die for the Germans. And they are going to roll a one to get them started. That's not good. And so uh, with a die roll of one on six, they are only going to get one action point, And that is absolutely terrible. So we mark that down here. They get one action point. Well, that's awful. Um, OK, now here's what you can spend action points on. If you want to move, it costs one. If you want to relocate your HQ, it costs the 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 figure is printed on the HQ in this case it would be to refit which is to um, rally yourself if you've been disrupted one to build an improved defense one a hasty attack one a regular attack one a prepared attack sorry a regular attack two a prepared attack three we've got one action point here um, so we could do a hasty attack that seems like a terrible idea the other thing we could do is move um, so yeah, that's awful. So what we're going to do is um, use some boats. We can we, each each time we activate a German formation, they can ship infantry across the river in boats. And we have two boat markers here to use in case we need to show that. Um, but there's uh, really no need to because we've only got one activation point. So we're going to um, move these infantry across here in boats. And that's our one action point spent. And we drop our activation marker down one to the five. And that's our first... That's our, the first of our surprise attack activations. That was absolutely terrible. Okay, who do we want to activate next then? I think we'll activate these green guys in here. They are the 44th Infantry Division from 3rd Motorized Corps. So they have got also got an activation level of 6. So we will roll a D6 for them. 
a d10 sorry for them and they have got a 10 okay that will no doubt give them the full seven um, points and it does so they've got seven action points to spend and this is going to be uh, somewhat more fruitful I think right um, while I'm on it um, there's uh, the chance for reaction in this game the the, the, the non active player doesn't just sit there and watch everything happen um, so we moved next to um, a Soviet unit here and when you do that um, the, that side can make a reaction check and if it makes that reaction check it can then grab the initiative and do some stuff, which is interesting. So, having moved adjacent to that, and this should have happened before we go up to the to the the next activation. I think we can use this HQ, which has got a reaction rating of five, and I think we can make a roll. Um, on a d10 and if we get five or less we interrupt uh, and and get to do some actions of our own um, so let's give this a try I'm going to look the rules up and come back okay so I've checked that and the um, the Soviets are allowed a reaction check here but because we're in the surprise attack phase it's at plus two they have to troll roll five or less on their die with a They've got a plus two on this. They get a three plus two is five. Is it equal to or less than? Because if it is, they have just succeeded in reacting um, to the uh, German aggression, the first German unit across the Bug River. Um, it says trigger reaction at, um, when a unit. Um, Resolving if the result is equal to or lower than the HE's printed reaction rating, it's successful. So, what that means is this uh, Russian HQ, uh, which is the third of the 90th infantry, which is uh, and the 90th are, are all these sort of border guard units, has successfully reacted. Um, to the German incursion and now they get to roll a die uh, to see how many action points they get to spend they've got a five their current activation rating is three and come over here three they've rolled a five and they if you're reacting you use the red column so they've got three action points to spend so I'm going to keep this, this seven action points that I rolled for the Germans because, you know, they did roll it, so I'll keep it for them. But at the moment what's happening is where the, the Soviet formation has got three action points to spend. And um, they can dig in, they can move, they could fight. Um, so movement... Um, Digging in, fighting. Digging in sounds good, doesn't it? Um, so let's get these Soviets to dig in um, an improved position on that bridge. I have no idea what that counter says. What does that say? No idea. Um, uh, absolutely no idea. Anyway, here's one that says improved defence and um, improved defence. So they will dig in for an action point. So they've got two action points left for this formation. Now, usefully or not very usefully, this guy stands outside command range. So he's at range. His 
um, HQs here are with a range, command range of 8. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 at least. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He's 10 away. And I'd like to get him back in with these guys. We can stack these little border guard units with infantry there. And that's why their, their symbol is in red. So I'd like to get him back into those pillboxes with that regular infantry. But the question is, can I activate him when he's out of command range? And I think the answer there is I have to try and make a roll on his effectiveness rating of 2. And effectiveness rating checks in the surprise phase are <laughs> plus 2, so I think he's got absolutely no chance at all, and that it's a complete waste of time trying. Yeah, all effectiveness checks are at plus 2, and that means that these two effectiveness units can't pass one, which means that he's stuck. Um, so I think the best that we can probably do is grab a couple more improved position markers and just dig in. Um, you know, as much as we can. So I think we'll... In fact, what we'll do is for our second point, we'll take this guy and we'll retreat him one, two, three into here. And then for our third point, we'll take this guy and dig in. In fact, no we won't. We'll take this guy. He's just going to be a speed bump. We're going to take him back here. And we'll retreat back, retreat back away from the river into, um, into better defensive positions and not just get surrounded like that. And hopefully... Hmm, do we really want to do that? Because what I'd also like to do is to be able to get another reaction. No, we're just going to get... Hmm. We're going to kind of get overwhelmed. So what I'm going to do is leave him there and dig this guy in. So we're going to drop an improved defence down there. And that will be our three action points. And we'll try and make this as difficult as we can um, for the Germans. Right, so that's their three action points spent. And now we go on to these green guys that we rolled 7-4. And I'm not doing all this on camera, so we'll carry on. Okay, looking at this situation then. Um, I was thinking of boating some infantry across uh, the river like this to provide combat support for attack by this group across the bridge into this border guard unit. However, I'm now very wary of the fact that the moment I sail the boats across, the HQ can make a reaction attempt. Again, it's got a, a, a effectiveness of five, so it would be one, two, three. He'd have a 30% chance, but if he made it, he could pull that unit out, you know, or he could entrench them. Um, and entrench other units in the area. And maybe I'm just better off trying to blast straight through and um, see how we get on there. By special, um, by special rule on the first turn, this bridge is less of a hazard to the Germans, so normally uh, it would be more difficult. But the uh, attack across this bridge is at minus two, and your tank points are halved. But I think what we're going to do is announce, announce a prepared attack for three action points straight across, and we'll try and seize this bridge immediately. So I'm going to spend three action points... And that means we're going to go into a combat immediately with this stack into this one. 
and we'll get to see how combat works. So um, the first thing that happens, in fact, I'll take both sides off so that we can see them, the counters up over here on the camera. So the defenders are there, effectiveness of two, combat strength of one, no anti-tank points and a move of three. They are as bad as it gets. The attacking group are here. We've got um, an infantry unit and two supporting armour. So we've got a combat strength of eight, two and two, four tank points, four tank points, um, five effectiveness on all of these. So let's have a look. The first thing we do, we've, we've chosen a prepared attack. So we determine the combat multiplier and we do that by drawing some chits out of a bag and the attack and defence both draw a chit which is going to be quite hard to do on camera because um, they're all in this bag here so I'm going to do that and come back okay so we've got two chits drawn the Germans drew the one on the left the Russians drew the one on the right they're double sided with the ELR down the left hand side two three four on the back they've got five six and seven so your effectiveness rating is, is there. And these are all fives. But were they different, we'd use the same chit and get different numbers, which is interesting. So on the left, we have the column we use if we're doing a hasty attack. This is a normal attack, and this is a prepared attack. We were doing a prepared attack. So all our fives are doubled in combat strength. The Russians, this is if you're disrupted, this is if you're normal defence, this is if you've got a prepared defence. The Soviets are strength 2, or, or um, effectiveness 2. Um, they are in a normal defence, uh, so they are at times 1, normal multiplier. So they've got an overall combat strength of 1, and here we've got 8, 10, 12, double to 24. So we've got 24 to 1 at the moment, um, which seems pretty good. Then we work out some uh, the uh, some die roll modifiers. So normally the a bridge across the Bug River would be a minus 4, but this turn that particular bridge is a minus 2. So there's a minus 2 on the dice roll. The next thing we can do is throw out, throw in combat support from our HQ. And HQ, if you do a... a, a a normal attack you can have half your HQ's combat support but if you do a prepared attack as we have you can get your full combat support our HQ can provide a combat support of five that middle number in there so we can have a plus five for our HQ um, And then we could also get combat support if there were anything adjacent to um, the defending unit from other units. Um, but um, we haven't got any because that I was going. That's why I was going to cross the river with other units to allow combat support. Um, but there's no point because we're just allowing reaction rolls which we don't want and finally we get an armor superiority bonus now we've got four tank points and they've got no anti-tank points and um if the attack has tank points the defender has no anti-tank points we get armor superiority equal to the full tank point value so we get a plus four from having tanks and the defender having no anti-tank capability. So that's plus four, plus five is plus nine, minus two for the river, it, the bridged river is plus seven on the 24 to one column. And um, the defender is in this town here, Vigo Danka, um, just here. There, in, I think that's a village hex. So, um, village, uh, 24 to 1. We're on the far end of the, of the table, and we've got a plus 7 on the die roll. Let's 
Let's roll our dice. I'm moving the camera around a lot because it's not all in front of me. We've got a 2 plus 7 is a 9. And we can use this handy thing here on this far column here. Um, I think terrain type. There we go. Um, a 9. And we've got a red 0 and then a red 3. So the defender's losses are 0 but we need to make effectiveness checks for our units and the defender's losses are 3 and they need to make effectiveness checks. So I'll come back when I've figured out what all that means but I think it means the defender's wiped out because they're only one strength and I'll work out the effectiveness checks for the Germans. So in turn one here in across the Bug River I am um, I completed the surprise element of the to the three German activations. We saw this uh, bunch of um, this infantry division only get one action point and <laughs> just caused the Russians to react. Um, this group uh, destroyed a guard unit here, got two guys boated across the river and then built a pontoon bridge to allow, allow everyone to cross. Um, and then up over here, uh, the Germans blasted across this bridge successfully, but actually in doing so managed to disrupt all three units in here, which wasn't very good. And then pushed across in other places and forced um, this infantry moved adjacent to a, an HQ with no other units and that forces it to displace backwards. So it ended up back in this village here and that cost it an activation point so that's down to two and in doing so it didn't prompt a reaction from this because it was displacing the AQ, HQ. Um, so you know something of a, a minor breakthrough here but then the Russians won the first actual initiative roll of the game um, and what they've done is move this HQ this is the second who are these guys they're like the second front or the second fortified something or other. They're all the guy, machine gun guys in the pill, pillboxes. So they move their HQ for two points um, to somewhere more central. where, And then they um, got all their... Um, got all five of their guys to dig in. So you can see all these improved defences. So a lot of the guys in pillboxes, we thought we're not... Those are our best defence at the moment. We'll dig all those into improved positions. Um... And the Germans now have just won the initiative and I haven't selected a formation yet for them. Um, so yeah, it's a question of which, who wants to go now, do we... And this gets quite difficult. I mean everyone's got things to do so, but, but selecting which formations or which order we might want things to go in is interesting. Um, I guess we might want, I guess we might want, the blue guys in here to go because I want them to build a pontoon bridge for 14th Panzer up in this area. Um, so yeah. I think we'll activate that blue infantry um, division. I don't want to attack across the bridge in here because I know there's, I, I can see there's an HQ in there, but there's two, there's other units in there. And I think with our, I think our eight strength halved or, or yeah, to four is going to struggle. You're not actually allowed to inspect stats, but we know that there's we know that there's five or six strength points in there, and we just haven't got. We want a bridge here, and then to push down the road and take it not across the river. Although there's a stream, there's a bridge stream there as well. That might be. Anyway, never mind that. We don't want to just frontally assault it at the moment. Um, I want to get that infantry moving so that okay let's activate that infantry which is this guy here this guy here they're currently on six activation points so we'll roll the dice they roll a two that's terrible again um so on this table here current activation level six they've rolled a two and that is 
two action points. That's just dreadful. So they're not going to get to attack, and that's not even enough to build a pontoon bridge. You need two action points to build a bridge. Um, and to do that, they need a guy boated across to the other side of the river. Um, that's awful. Yeah, really terrible. <laughs> OK. OK, well, let's boat this guy across the river. I won't use the boat markers because we know we've only got two action points anyway. Um, in doing that, we allow a reaction roll for this guy. Um, his HQ is here, so uh, let's let's give the Russians a reaction roll, and they get a two, and they've made their reaction roll. So um, let's roll the Russians some action points of their own, and they've got um, they've got three currently. An activation rating of three, they get a five. Five crossed with three on the reaction level table here. They rolled a five. Coming over to the three column, that gives them two action points themselves. Okay, so they'll drop that down one because they've just activated and they'll get two action points. And now the Russians. <laughs> well, what else are they going to do? They're going to dig in. Uh, of course they are. So, um, have they got a unit in here? Yes, they do. They'll dig in there. And this guy here will dig in as well. Okay, that's their two action points spent. And now the... I think we go back to the... Um, the Germans, um, the infantry, who've got one more action point, which is basically a move. Um, okay. Well, these guys back here can come one into here and then boating across the, the river is plus one. So that's plus one for them to come into there. Now, you can't roll the, you can't roll a reaction roll um, for a formation more than once in an, in an activation. So the... This, uh, this formation that just reacted, the Russians can't roll, but this one can, um, if they want to, which they do. So that is the, that's this second front here. Those guys are going to roll a reaction. They've got a reaction on a four. and they've rolled a 10 and they failed to react. But that is the infantry, so that's the infantry division done. And now we're rolling initiative. And you can see the flow of this game is quite interactive in that, you know, as you move, there can be reactions and things can dig in while you're moving. And yeah, it's uh, there's a flow to it that's really intriguing. Um, and, and yeah, kind of cool. Really kind of cool. I, I, first impressions or initial impressions of this are that it's um, it's very fluid and, and very enjoyable in that respect without needing to do all that stuff of putting thing, things in modes that a lot of operational games use. I'm thinking specifically of OCS where, you know, you're choosing reaction mode and whatever, um, you know, and you're... Um, you're using that mechanic of, of, and it takes counters and faff and phases and stuff. Whereas this just has, you know, that play counterplay thing going on. Very cool. Um, we roll initiative then. Uh, and it's so um, each turn the Germans uh, roll for some interdiction. The game setup tells you where the German interdiction marker is. And that's a permanent 
plus on their initiative. So the Germans have got plus one on this initiative roll. The Russians are on the plus two spot. So the German um, black dice plus one for the Germans, plus two for the Russians. And it's three, two in the Russian favour. So that flips the um, that flips the marker over to the German side. And the Russians can choose something to activate. Okay. And I think the sensible thing for them to do is get um, either 87 infantry or the um, 41st tank. So up here they've got um, two stacks of two stacks of tanks. And back here, they've got um, two stacks of infantry and then more infantry from that 87th in here, which I hope is in range. One, I'll count the hexes off camera, but yeah, this, this HQ here, this 87th infantry HQ has got some HQ buried um, up over here, which might get swamped if, if there's some sort of breakthrough here. And we might leave this to the... Um, might leave this to the pillboxes and try and pull them back somewhere better while moving these forward somewhere better. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see what we can do. Um, do we want to do that? Do we want to activate the tanks? Tanks might be cool, actually. Hmm. I'm, uh, it's a real tough, real tough decision. This. Do you want to throw? Do you want to throw the Soviets forward, the Russians forward, knowing that it's likely to be a bit of a forlorn gesture? Or do you want to try and find them some? nicer positions to to you know uh dig in with hmm. behind streams and in forests and things where they're where they're harder to attack um i think we will i think we're going to activate the 87th infantry which has got Currently got five activation points. Let's give it a dice roll. Two. That's terrible. Nothing's getting much in the way of activation at the moment. Okay. Five. Two. That's two action points. Okay. Well. Okay, well, two action points isn't very many. And the problem we've got is that if we start moving stuff that's adjacent to German units, then I think we would give them a reaction, except they're on the other side of the Bug River, and in that case I don't think we do. Hmm. I'll check that. So I checked the reaction rules, and... You are allowed a reaction roll, even if something is moving on the other side of the Bug River. Um, it's The rules suggest that the, the ability to react is not based on um, zones of control, and you don't project a zone of control across the river, but that doesn't impact the reaction roll. So anyway, the, um, this infantry you, um, division failed the reaction roll, and everything has moved forward a, 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 a fair amount anyway. Um, yeah, the uh, Russians slowly getting themselves organised. This uh, I'd realised that I'd stacked the infantry up over here, th three per hex, and that I was thinking, hold on, it, it that's breaching the stacking limits. You're only allowed one infantry unit per hex, but it said within one hex of this town, so I just spread it all out and then activated them a couple of times and have just been moving that infantry around to start getting it somewhere useful. Haven't moved these tanks yet on the Russian side and. The, and the um, Germans currently have an initiative where I think we're going to do something with these boys down here who opened us up 
with their one action point <laughs> activation in the surprise impulse and and really achieved nothing at all apart from alerting the Russians. Um, yeah, uh, in here we're starting to surround some of these improved positions. These guys have taken a couple of losses. I think these guys have taken a loss that you mark up with these um, strength point markers. A um, couple of losses in here. And we've just driven um, driven these guys out of this pillbox hex. Um, but disruptions to our own units, um, we needed reforming. This stack, the Germans have been terribly unlucky with their dice rolls, I have to say. This stack, which has got infantry and two armour units in it, when it came through and attacked into here, got a 0-3 result. And all the units have to make effectiveness checks not to be disrupted, and they all failed. And then it took me a load of action points, about five or six action points to undisrupt them. They just kept failing rolls. And the same's happened again in here. And oh, it's painful, you know, for them trying to make progress when you get disrupted and so you can't do anything apart from try and undisrupt. And then on five, five or less on a ten-sided dice and you're failing the rolls just consistently, you know, consistently failing them on the checks and then failing to recover as well. So slow progress for the Germans here. I haven't even started up here. These guys have, have barely activated. Um, and um, yeah, some inroads being made in, in these areas. So I'm going to activate these guys. Let's just do a quick roll for them on camera because they'll probably roll a one and, and do more comedy shuffling around. Um, let's see what they get. They currently have five, an activation level of five. So if we come over here and roll the dice for them, they've got a five. I missed the dice rolling tray. They've got a five. And five on the five here, dice roll five on the five is five activation points. There's a nice symmetry about that, isn't there? Five, I say activation points, action points, whatever you want to call them. They've got five action points to actually kick off their, um, their turn. And I think what they're likely to do, these guys have dug in, but I think what they're likely to do is immediately launch like a prepared assault over there um, just to open this bridge up and then see what that allows them to do so let's do that let's let's spend three of our action points straight away to um, launch a prepared assault across the bridge here that's going to be at a minus four this isn't one of the bridges with the special rules which is a bit scary so I'll, I'll drop that activation marker down one. I'll spend three points there. Um, so yeah. Uh, so we're going to draw a chit for both of these. Um, the attacker and defender. I'll do that off camera. There's no way I can do it one handed. So here's our chits. Um, the Germans got a times two. 16 the russians got a times three prepared defense um with two rating so they've got a three 16 to three five to one um for the germans in we are in um dense forest um so we're on the four to one column here dense forest on the combat charts now we have to work out our um, modifiers and we've got minus four for attacking across the bug river on a bridge um, so then we've got uh, plus two from having uh, adjacent supporting infantry here and we've got a plus four from our HQ back here, providing full HQ support. So we've got a total of plus six, minus four is plus two. Plus two on the dice, and let's see how we get on. That's a four, and this combat's gone really rather badly. So four here, um, that is uh, two losses. Uh, to the attacker, one loss to the defender, and um, effectiveness checks 
for either side. Well, one loss for the defender wipes the defender out because he's only got one strength point. So that's easy enough to um, deal with. We're not going to retreat, so we'll just take our two losses as the attacker, I think. Um, so we'll find a six strength point marker there. Pop that on here, and now he has to make an effectiveness check or be disrupted. So he's got a four effectiveness, and he's rolled a five, and he's disrupted. Um, so he flips over to his disrupted side with the uh, diagonal strike through it. And um, uh, he stays in there. Now, one thing I, I'd, I'd not uh, realised is if you win a... If you win a battle, you get an immediate action point. But I think winning a battle means taking fewer losses than the, the other side. So we actually took more losses than the other side, so we don't get that free action point. Um, so I think that is the end of things uh, for that combat. And we've now got two more... Um, we've now got two more action points... So I think we're going to take this guy here and move him one into there and then along the road in this forest. One, two, three up into there. And I think we want to push someone else across the river with boats. Um, we've got a lot of infantry here to move. I think we'll just take this guy here and he'll cross the river in boats, one, two, and then into this forest here for three. And technically those guys could make a reaction roll on a five or less. And I think they'll give it a try. And they've succeeded. Now, we were out of action points anyway, so it doesn't matter to us. Um, they will roll, they've got an activation level of 2, they roll a 5. Um, current activation level 2, rolling a 5 on the red um, just gives them one action point. Um, they'll take that action point and they will use it. Uh, to dig in here with an improved defence and that costs them another uh, another spot and they're down to one activation point now uh, probably won't be activating again and we're rolling initiative I'll just pop the chits back in the bag let's do a quick initiative roll um, it, the Russians are now on a plus four the Germans are on a plus one for interdiction and that is a 8 for the Germans, a 14 for the Russians, and the Russians are grabbing the initiative, and I guess might try rolling their tanks into action. Um, and see where their tanks want to go. So here I've got a German attack going from here into uh, the, the um, town holding the bridge here. Um, I noticed... Uh, I made an error over here. I attacked across the bridge with these guys when I could have just avoided the bridge and attacked straight in from these guys with support from here and then therefore avoided the minus four. Um, those kind of errors happen when you're playing a new game. I haven't made that error here. We haven't attacked across the bridge. We've used stuff that was previously boated across the river now to attack with support from all over the place. We've boated these guys in. Um, I'm showing this one just because the chits... Um, the chits are uh, uh, show how how they work with sort of multiple units. So the Germans drew this as an attacking chit. They've got uh, an effectiveness of four, so they're tripled because it's a prepared attack. So they're on twenty four. These guys have got an improved defence, so we're using this column. So the effectiveness two are doubled to two, but the effectiveness six. Um, uh, they're, they're, sorry, the, the strength 6, their effectiveness 4, so they're on normal. So you've got 6 there, 2 there, that's 8 Twen against a tripled 8, which is 24. 3 to 1 in a 
city, I believe that is. So we'll start off um, using the three to one column in the city. Let's grab the player A to just do this. Um, town, town, <clears throat> three to one is over here. So <clears throat> we're on this column here. Three to one for towns. And then we're doing <clears throat> modifiers and um, we've got combat support from the HQ worth five. We've got support um, by other units of the formation plus two per hex and we've got two of those. So we've got plus four for that is plus nine and we've got no armor, but we've just got a plus nine. So let's give the dice a roll. And we've got a 5 plus 9 is 14 uh, on this column is a 0, 3. But they do have to make an effectiveness check. So an effectiveness check for the Germans, three losses and an effectiveness check um, for the Russians. And I need to work out which one has to take the first loss. I'm not entirely sure which one it is. I th mm. If either side had con um, contributed anti-tank, they would have had to take the loss on that first. But given that anti-tank wasn't required because there were no armour coming in, um, this anti-tank point wasn't required. So I'll have to check where the casualties sit. Well, it looked like the Russians got to choose who, who took the loss. They have to be distributed evenly. Um, so they took the loss on the on the guard border guard unit. But then they had to retreat this guy. He was stopped in a zone of control, took an extra loss from that, took two more losses to satisfy the three and lost three strength points in total. The Germans would, failed their check, of course, and were disrupted and then spent their bonus action point for winning the battle to undisrupt it, to try and rally him and failed that role as well. Pretty standard for the Germans, this go. And, uh, and the HQ that was in here uh, had to relo uh, had to relocate, got displaced by the presence of enemy units, and uh, ended up in this village back up here with one less um, activation point. Um, so the Germans now have two more AP to spend, and um, yeah, they're going for it. So I've reached the end of turn one here in across the Bug River by Vuka Simulations. Um, I've got a feeling it's gone quite badly for the Germans. Their dice rolls on their action points have been pretty horrible, so they've been getting ones and twos and threes. Um, I've not made a very efficient use of pontoon bridges, especially up here in the northern sector, where I put them in a really bad place for tanks and mechanised it across into heavy forest. That was awful. No, I've slowed myself right down with some very poor operational planning and the combats have gone reasonably well for us apart from one or two which have been a bit of a nightmare but we've got enough strength on the board to soak up a few losses and keep pushing forward. You can see the Russians have by contrast have done quite well in terms of managing to pull back and dig in to improve positions and not keep getting swamped and overrun and have also started forming second lines at least in a couple of spots where they've got troops to do it of course there's this enormous great big gap in the middle of the board here but um, they have got forward defenses there and are hoping that they hold long enough to get some more reinforcements in so it's all um, nice and tense nice and structured and uh, each turn starts with an admin phase so we've rolled into turn two um, the admin phase where you do refit and you work out how many how many of these um, uh, activity points each of your formations is going to get for the next turn and you get some re reinforcements and uh, and so on and replacement points and and you check to see if things are isolated and in supply and out of command and all the rest of it um, I'll do that separately to this I think I'm going to wrap up turn one here and um, move on in another in another segment of film <laughs>